Hey, hey, it's Cisco and Ebert. I love these guys. Hi, I'm Roger Ebert. And I'm Gene Siskel, and watching a film is a very complicated activity, more complicated than you might realize. Especially in your case, Gene, and the reason for that is that we use our eyes, which are quite complicated organs. Let's use our eyes now to look at the first clip, which comes to us from Disney and is called Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye. Inertia is a property of matter. T minus seven seconds. the science guy. Brought to you by those round, squishy things in your head. Eyes. Eyeballs. That's what today's show is all about. Our eyes let us focus on the world around us. They let us see what we see every day. See? Like the uh, lab door of science. Our eyes let us see colors. They let us see how far away things are, how big they are. Our eyes let us see the whole world without even touching it. Isn't that cool? Our eyes are connected to our brains by big, complicated bundles of nerves. The nerves are so big and complicated that many scientists like to think of our eyes as part of our brains. See? This is the eyeball demonstrator of science. And here is the eyeball. That's right. Your eye is shaped like a ball. And inside is the lens. The lens is the clear part that light goes through. And in your eye, the lens sits way up near the front, like this. Now, before light gets into your lens, we have to control the amount of light that comes into our eye. We don't want to have too much or too little. And we do that with something called the iris. The iris changes size like this. By the way, the iris is the part of your eye that has color. Like someone says to you, you have blue eyes or brown eyes or green eyes. That's the iris, this part right here. Now, let's say we're looking at something, maybe a kid on a stick out here. All right, the light from the kid on a stick goes through our iris, through the lens, to the back of our eye. And look, the image of the kid on the stick is upside down. Isn't that wild? The kid on the stick is upside down. We heard you, Bill. So our brains take the upside down images from both our eyes, turn them right side up, mix them together, and make sense out of what we see. From out of the West came a woman with mysterious eyes. A woman who saw things differently because she had to. And they called her the High Plains Squinter. If only she could see it, she could drink it. High Plains Squinter. Hi-yo, hi-yo, the High Plains Squinter. Hi-yo, hi-yo, the High Plains Squinter. Go, see it. The High Plains Squinter. Well, we all know the Western is coming back, which is fine if it's done intelligently, but I think that was just silly. I couldn't agree more with you, Roger. If a film wants to talk about how eyelids help protect the eye and keep it moist and regulate light... And how squinting is a way to try to focus... Yes, that's one thing. This, however, was nothing more than shameless pandering to the eye doctor community. Okay, when we come back, a film with real vision called Compass Man. Here's an experiment you can try at home. Focus your eyes far away. Put your fingers up to your face and move them closer and closer together. You'll be able to see a third finger just floating in space. Try it at home, right now. You really should. Put your fingers up like this. Yeah, Are you listening yeah, to me? Yeah. You have to do it like this. You use your eyes for playing. You use your eyes for safety. 
You use your eyes for just looking at things. And we are well into round one of the National Staring Championships, where current champion Pert is meeting the icy glare of challenger Kate. You know, an interesting fact, Lance, your optic nerves, the nerves which run from your eyes to your brain, are about 20 centimeters long. Well, that may be true, Timmy, but what it's really going to come down to is who blinks first? Oh, it sends a chill down my spine. Yeah. And we'll be back with more from the National Staring Championships right after this. Our eyes regulate the amount of light that enters them, kind of like this. Hi, my eyes are brown, and yours may be too or blue, or green, or hazel. The part of our eye that has color is called our iris. People with blue eyes have a little bit of melanin in their iris. People with dark brown eyes have a lot. Hazel and green eyes have a medium amount of melanin. Melanin makes us all different, but in a way, all the same. Focus. I said focus. It is in focus. Ah, that's better. I'm in focus. In order for us to see the world the way we do, our eyes have to focus the light that comes into them. Here's how it works. Light comes into our eye through the lens, and the lens makes an image land exactly on the back surface of our eye. If the image lands back here, or up here, then it'll be blurry. It'll be out of focus. And the way our eye changes where the image lands is by changing the shape of the lenses in our eyes. If an object is far away, the lenses in our eyes might be thin, might look something like this. If an object is up close, the lenses in our eyes will be thick, might look something like this. Of course, the lenses in our eyes aren't nearly this big, and they don't change thickness nearly this much. No. No, they change thickness this much. Only about a tenth of a millimeter. That's all it takes to change focus from the end of your nose to 20 miles away. Thank you for joining me on... Con 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 consider the following. You can make your own lens with a plastic bag. You just fill it full of water and zip it shut. Now pick an object to focus on, like this box of cereal. Move your plastic bag lens of science back and forth. You'll be able to see the box magnified. Now squeeze your lens. You can make the box blurry or sharp. It's the same way the lenses in our eyes work. Not bad for a bag. To Ruth, the chalkboard looked like this. If you can't read what's on the chalkboard, it's hard to answer some of the teacher's questions. Class, what happens when we can't change the shape of the lens in our eyes enough to put the image exactly on the back surface of the eye? Duh, it's out of focus. But we can correct the problem with science. If you put a special lens in front of the eye, it bends the light coming into the eye in such a way the eye's lens will put the image directly on the back surface of the eye. We call that special lens glasses. Very good. Focus. <laughs> Did you know that everything you see is an image on your retina? It's true. And those images are made by two kinds of cells called rods and cones. Now, rods aren't sensitive to colors, just to shades of gray and low light. That's what gives us night vision. Let's paint some happy rods around the edge. Happy little rods. Uh huh. She can't see colors. Hey, did you see that? What? Oh, that car. What car? The red one. The red one. What red car? The, red, the big red one. There are a million cars. In a tough city, you need tough cops that can see, not 
rod and cone. Okay, we're coming in. Okay, I can't see. What do you mean you can't see? It's dark in here. I can't see in the dark. What do you mean you can't see in the dark? <laughs> rod and cone. A couple of cops that can't see their way out of a 40% recyclable paper bag. On the Bill Nye Television Network. Cones don't help much in the dark. What they do is let us see in bright light and in thousands of different colors. So let's make some colorful cones in the center. Here we are at the retina, land of happy little rods and cones. Happy. Man, I tell you, this is worse than watching golf. Tell me about it. Here we go, stand by. Look, why don't we get out of here and go get... Three, two, you're on. Hello, and welcome back to the National Staring Championships. Right now, we're... Um, we're going to go to Timmy for an update. Timmy? Oh, okay. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, they're still staring at each other, Lance. They're still staring, and uh, I think it's safe to say that uh, uh, that color blindness is a lack of light-sensitive pigments in the retina. Yeah, thank you, Tammy, you and we'll be back with more from the National Staring Championships after this. I can still get around the city very well. I could ride a bike. I could play Super Nintendo. I do judo. You see, I know that I'm blind. And I know nothing is not going to stop me from being what I want to be or to do what I want to do. When a soccer ball is coming towards you, you want to figure out where it's going to land. And you do that by getting cross-eyed. No kidding. When you're looking at an object in the distance, your eyes turn in a little bit. Then your brain uses these angles to figure out how far away the object is. The closer the ball is to you, the more crossed your eyes get. Once you know where the ball is going to land, then you can decide whether to play it with your feet or your head. That was a header. That was a header. My name is Becky Erickson, and I'm an ocularist. And what that means is that I make artificial eyes. And we have Crystal here today, of which we are going to build her and I 
because she lost her eye when she was younger uh, due to cancer. In making artificial eyes, the first step that we do is we make uh, a mold of the eye. It's very similar to when, say, your mom makes a jello mold. You pour the jello into the mold, let it set, and as soon as it's cold enough, you take the mold off and you have a duplicate or an impression of that mold. And that's what we do similarly with our patients. From this point, we want to go and just clean up the blank so that it's nice and smooth and comfortable for Crystal to try on in her socket. Okay, this is the part where I now get to switch hats from being a scientist to an artist. For Crystal, we have a blue eye, so we use a lot of white and gray. This next part is a lot like spin art at the fair. We're gonna go ahead and turn on our spinning machine, get our black paint, touch it to the iris, and make a perfectly round pupil. You can see that we've attached the iris, and this thread is made of nylon. And now we have the illusion that our plastic eye has real veins. Now from this point, after we add the veins and the pigment or color to the white portion, we go ahead and cap the whole eye over with a clear plastic and then let it cook for about an hour and then presto, we have an eye. Okay, now for the delivery. There you go, Crystal. Your new artificial eye. There's looking at you, kids. That last thing uh, really got to you, didn't it, Phil? Uh, oh, hi. <laughs> I was just crying. That's right, it happens to the best of us. The tears you make when you cry when you're upset are the same tears you make when you're just washing your eye. And tears come from little glands above your upper eyelid. They flow down over your eye and then drain into your nose. And that's why a lot of times you have to blow your nose when you're crying. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, do you see this little dot? in the corner of my eye. That's where the tears drain from your eye into your nose. See, it's all connected all the time. Do you see the little dot? Do you see it? Do you see the little dot in the corner of my eye where the tears drain out? Bill. That's where the tears drain from your eye into your nose. Bill. Bill, come on, Let, let's talk. Bill, don't do this. No, no, listen to me. Bill, why don't you take some time off? They're tough. They're gritty. They have potholes. The Streets of New York, with your host, William Nye. Welcome to the Streets of New York. Well, it's not really the Streets of New York. It's an optical illusion. I mean, a truck is real, but all those buildings are flat. They're almost on one piece of material. See, it's your eyes playing tricks on you. It's not just your eyes, it's your brain. You know, they're connected. See, it's an illusion. Next week, the streets of Plains, Montana. Uh, hello, here we are again at the National Scaring Championships. No progress yet, right, Timmy? Timmy! Timmy! One-eyed people don't have any depth perception. Oh, that's great. That's just great. He blinked! Ladies and gentlemen, it's over! This contest of corneas between two visual virtuosos has ended. Let's see that again. Well, that's it. We have a new staring champion from the National Staring Championships, I'm Lance Yardstick. Huh? Did you know that? 100 million people in the U.S. wear eyeglasses or contact lenses. All babies are born with blue eyes. Each eyeball is approximately the size of a ping pong ball. Now you know. Having two eyes allows us to see things in 3D. If we didn't have two eyes, we wouldn't see things the way we see them. Whoa! Oh.
coming in your head now Eyeballs, eyeballs left and right So talented now Each one sitting in the socket They're focusing now Blue as sky or even brown as chocolate And sometimes red now Hey! Watch it, watch it, look it, look it, look it, look it. Two eyes let you see in 3D with separate views now. Each view seems simultaneously. Your brain will fuse now. Close one, you lose depth perception and things look flat now. Close both, you lose sight perception. You're not a bad now. We have eyes so we can see. The study of them's known as ophthalmology, but not every eye works perfectly. So try to have your eyeballs with the end. You try to have your eyeballs with the end, you listen. Eyeballs come with every baby. They're in their heads now. Start blue, but they can change with aging. They're brown instead now. And if you are not seeing your best, just look ahead now and go to the optometrist. Just go ahead now. Now, that was a little better. Well, you're just saying that because you wear glasses. It has nothing to do with whether I wear glasses or not. A lot of people wear glasses. I know, but I don't. You realize I love that these I guys. Well, that's our show. See ya. <laughs> Get it? See ya? <laughs> you know, maybe this Bill Nye guy will be big and... Nah, I don't think so. Huh? Produced in association with the National Science Foundation. Do you see it? Do you see the little dot? <laughs> oh, I see it's time to go. Get it? I see. <laughs> well, thanks for keeping focused on us this week. And look for us next week when we'll visit. Man. <laughs>